Hello everyone, today we're going to do vertical velocity problems when the object is starting on the ground. Now vertical velocity problems basically means is we're going to throw something up into the air and we're going to calculate how long it's going to take for that object to hit the ground. So here we go, let's get started. Now one of the more interesting things is the formula. Okay, so Notice I've got this split into two pieces, when the units are given in feet and when the units are given in meters. So again, for feet and given meters. Okay, now notice the formula. There is a subtle difference for feet. Okay, it's minus 16. And for meters, it's negative 4.9. So what those are basically standing for is the gravitational pull on Earth, okay? So that's for you science people that love that kind of stuff. Now, so let's go over what the variables mean. Okay, so your H, your H stands for your ending height of the object. So where we want these things to end up. Is it on the ground? Is it gonna be 50 feet in the air? Is it gonna be 10 feet in the air? That kind of stuff. So the H stands for when we are finished. The T's, I got two T's here. It stands for the time. Now the time in most cases in these problems is going to be given in seconds because our vertical velocity is going to be given typically in feet or meters per second. Okay. Now, then our vertical velocity, the V, that's going to be given in either feet per second or meters per second. That's the rate in which or the strength in which we are throwing something into the air. Okay, so we're going to defy gravity with it for a little while before gravity eventually wins out. And the S stands for the starting height of the object. Now, I do want to make you aware, some teachers, they don't use S for this. They use H sub zero or HO. Okay, so again, I like to use S because S standing for starting height makes more sense to more people than H sub zero. But again, that's up to you, okay? That's how you see it or how your teacher presents this material. But again, I like to use S because frankly, S is much easier to understand. So, but notice here, again, in the meters formula, we have the same pieces, it's the same setup. The only difference is, like I said, the, the meters unit of gravity is negative 4.9 rather than negative 16. And that's the only difference between the meter formula and the feet formula. All right, so let's take a look. Now, yes, unfortunately, these are all gonna be word problems. And yes, for those of you who hate word problems, I'm sorry, but this is the way it's gonna be, okay? So let's get started. Let's start reading through the question. Now, again, my approach to word problem is the first thing you do is we gotta read the stupid thing. Don't do anything else but read the problem. So, a startled armadillo jumped straight into the air with initial vertical velocity of 14 feet per second. How many seconds will it take for the armadillo to land on the ground? Okay, so we got an armadillo. We're scaring it, jumps into the air, and then it comes back to the ground. So the second time, let's go through this. A started armadillo starts, jumps straight into the air with initial vertical velocity, that's gonna be important, of 14 feet per second. That's our vertical velocity. How many seconds does it take for the armadillo to land on the ground? Okay. So when I do this, I usually set up on the side here, H, whoops, I didn't wanna write with the highlighter, sorry about that. Uh, there's the undo button. Okay, I usually do H, okay, for our ending height. T, typically our time. Now, normally we're going to be solving for that. We have V and we have S, the, the variables of our, of our uh, problem. All right, so let's start. Uh, starting height, and let's kind of work this, ending height, let's do the ending height. We'll start back this way. Ending height of the object. Now, they said they want this armadillo to land on the ground. So what would the starting, the ending height be if, for ground? Well, Ground would be height of zero. T, I don't know time, that's what we're finding. How many seconds, that's our T. Vertical velocity, we're told it's gonna to be 14 feet per second. So that tells me we're gonna be using the feet formula. 
and it's going to be 14 feet per second. Now, starting height. Now, because they didn't say anything, we're going to assume that this armadillo was already on the ground to begin with. So we're going to use zero. Okay. Now, for those of you trying to picture what this thing's doing. Okay, so here's our ground. Okay, here's our armadillo. What's going to happen is we're going to jump out and scare it. Okay. Which means we're going to send this thing up into the air. And it's going to come back to the ground. Now, what we're going to be calculating here is the time it takes to come back to the ground, this one here. Now, again, starting time, that's this guy right here. That's going to be t equaling zero because that's when it was we scared it to begin with. What we're going to be looking for is this. Okay. So, let's set up our equation. H equaling. Now, since I'm using feet, it's negative 16. T squared plus VT plus s all right so let's substitute what we know h is zero equaling negative 16 time i don't know so it's t squared plus vertical velocity is 14 feet per second so 14 and time again i don't know so it's t and the s starting height is going to be plus zero okay now again do I really need this plus zero here? No, I don't. Okay, so I'm going to kind of get rid of it. So we're left with this. Now we're into the point where we're going to start solving. Now again, this is the solving quadratic stuff. So again, if you did not see the video on solving equations by factoring, you need to go back and watch this video because otherwise what I'm going to do next is not going to make much sense. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to follow our procedure that we did for solving an equation by factoring. So the first thing we do, step one, remember, make sure one side zero, which it is. Step two says to factor. Now, since this only has two pieces, I'm going to look to take out GCF. In which case, I can remember our lead piece is negative. We can't have that. So I'm going to take out a negative. Now, between 16 and 14, I can take out a 2. And because there's t squared and t, I can take out a t. So when I divide all this negative 16 t squared by negative 2t, I get 8t. 14t divided by negative 2t is negative 7. Okay. Now, I can't factor anymore, so we're stuck there. So my next step, remember, pull the pieces apart now. Negative 2t, 8t minus 7. Oops. Okay, set the pieces to 0. And now solve this. See, I'm going to divide by negative 2. So t is equal to 0, which we already knew. That was, again, this point right here. We already called that. t equals 0 is going to be one of the answers. So now let's go to this one over here. So I'm going to add the 7. 8t now equals 7. And I'm going to have to shrink this a little bit. And now I'm going to divide everything by 8s. So t is equal to 7 eighths of a second. Okay, so that means that this armadillo was in the air for 7 eighths of a second. Okay, so there's that one. Now typically, <clears throat> typically what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, decimals for this because some of the fractions get to be pretty ugly. So 7 eighths is going to be uh, 0.875 seconds. Now, for my students, I, I would accept 7 eighths of a second. Some teachers are going to say, yeah, give me the decimal. So again, that's up to your teacher and you. Okay? All right, so let's move on. All right, now, then what we're going to do. Now, I have to make this disclaimer right now. 
This is hypothetical only. I am I do not have armadillos in my backyard. I do not have anabolic steroids to be giving armadillos that I do not have in my backyard. Okay? This is solely hypothetical. I say this I only say this because every year I do these problems with students because it's fun and we all get a laugh. But I actually had a student go to the SRO, student resource officer, and saying that I'm abusing animals with ster anabolic steroids. So again, I do not have armadillos. I do not have injectable anabolic steroids. I am not experimenting on any animals of any kind. Okay, so now that I got the disclaimer out of the way, here we go. So first thing we do, we're, let's read the problem. We give the armadillo steroids. A startled armadillo jumps straight into the air with an initial vertical velocity of 100 feet per second. How many seconds does it take the armadillo to land on the ground? Okay, so again, startled armadillo stri jumps straight into the air with initial vertical velocity of 100 feet per second. Okay. Oh, okay. They're playing in the water. That's nice. How many seconds? So that's what we're looking for here. Does it take for the armadillo to land on the ground? Okay. So A, oh, I did it again. So H, K, T, V, S. Okay, so let's start. Ending height of the armadillo. They say we're gonna land on the ground, so it's gonna be zero. Time, that's what I'm looking for. I don't know what it is. Vertical velocity, this time it's gonna be 100 feet per second. Oops. Oops. And the time, or sorry, the starting point, we are assuming again this armadillo was on the ground. Okay, so we have this. So now, because they gave us feet, our formula again, H equals negative 16T squared plus VT plus S. All right, let's substitute in what we know. Ending height of the object is zero. Negative 16 T squared plus 100 vertical velocity T. And again, my starting point of the armadillo was on the ground. So again, it is zero. So again, do I really need to list the plus zero there? No, I do not. So I'm going to get rid of it. Okay. So now let's start our process. Step one, make sure one side zero is one side zero. Yes, it is. Step two, factor. Now, something like this, I'm always going to start with GCF. So, again, I see the negative. I can't have my lead piece be negative, so I'm going to kick out the negative. Okay. Then we're going to have 16, and then between 16 and 100, I can take out a 4. And between T squared and T, I can kick out a T. So negative 4t, so we divide this, negative 16t squared by negative 4t is 4t. So 100t divided by negative 4t is negative 25. All right, so now, now that we factored completely, now we pull the pieces apart. Negative 4t, 4t minus 25. Set the pieces to zero. Solve your equation. So divide by negative four. So again, t equals zero. We already knew that. Because again, in the big scheme of thing, here's our armadillo, jumped him in the air. Again, when he started, he was on the ground. We're trying to figure out this other half. So again, we're gonna add 25. So 4t equals 25, divide by 4, so t is equal to, now again, with something like this, let me minimize the screen a little bit, something like this folks, we're going to need to give the answer in proper fractional form or proper decimal because if I say yeah, I'll be there, it'll be there in 25 fourths of a second, no one's going to know what you're talking about, okay, so we put this in proper form. 
So how many times four go into 25? That's six times. Six times four is 24 with one on top. So it'd be six and a quarter seconds. Or like I said, some teachers like this as a decimal because it makes more sense. So 6.25 seconds. And there's that one. Okay, let's move on. All right, so let's take a look at this one. <clears throat> okay. A startled armadillo. Okay, so here we're going to do with meters. So we got to be a little more careful. A startled armadillo jumps straight into the air with initial vertical velocity of 4.9 meters per second. How many seconds does it take for the armadillo to land on the ground? Okay. So, first things first. Okay. So let's reread it. Let's identify all our pieces. So a startled armadillo jumps straight into the air with initial vertical velocity of 4.9 meters per second. How many seconds does it take for the armadillo to land on the ground? Okay. So H. Keep doing it. Chocolate pudding in the donut, huh? So H. H T V S. Okay. So H ending behind the object. It's landing on the ground. So zero. Okay. Time. Okay. Again, we don't know that, so it's gonna change. Yes, and then blast off, right? Vertical velocity, 4.9 meters per second. And starting height, again, it's on the ground. All right, so now that we have all that established, now here's where we have to be careful. We're using meters now. So H equals... It's already fixed, Gwen. Negative 4.9. Take it to mama. Mama fix it. T squared plus VT plus S. So like I said, the only thing that changed was the four, the 16 to a 4.9 because we're in meters. All right, so let's fill in what we know. H is zero equals negative 4.9 T squared plus my vertical velocity is 4.9 T plus s, which again is zero. Now again, so do I need the plus zero on the end? No, I do not, so I can get rid of it. Now the next thing I would do, since we're dealing with the decimals, I would get rid of them before I start factoring. It's gonna make life so much easier. So notice, this has only got one decimal space. This only has one decimal space. So if I times everything by tens, it gets rid of the decimals. So 10 times zero is still zero. Negative four point, or yeah, try that again. 49 T squared plus 49 T, okay. Now again, technically, yes, you could also factor out a GCF of 1 tenth. That would also do the same thing. But again, I find it's easier for my students to see just multiply by the 10. All right, so now at this point, let's start to factor. So since one side's already zero, I'm going to take out GCF. Now, again, my lead term is negative. I don't like that, so we're going to do negative. Now, between 49 and 49, I can take out a 49. Between T squared and T, I can kick out a T, leaving me T minus 1, like so. So now at this point, Let's pull this apart. So negative 49t, t minus 1. Set the pieces to 0. Now solve what we got. Divide by negative 49. So 0 by negative 49 is just 0. So there's 1. Now over here, add 1. So t is equal to 1. So, it'll take this armadillo a second, 
before it comes back to the ground. All right, so let's take a look at another one in meters. Let's shrink that. Okay. So let's start off. Okay. So first thing you do with the word problem is you read the stupid thing. You don't do anything else but read it. So a startled armadillo jumps straight into the air with initial vertical velocity of 13 meters per second. How many seconds does it take for the armadillo to, to land? How long? How many seconds does it take for the armadillo take to land on the ground? Now that's a typo right there. All right, so here we go. A startled armadillo jumps into the air with initial vertical velocity of 13 meters per second. How many seconds? That's important. Does it take for the armadillo that should be to land on the ground? So to land on the ground. Okay, so it's H T V S. All right, so here you go. Ending height of the object. It says we're going to land on the ground, so zero. Time. I don't know what that is. Vertical velocity is 113 meters per second. And starting height, because we're going to assume it didn't say anything else, we're going to say this, the armadillo was on the ground, so it is again zero. So here we go. Our formula, since it's meters, H equals negative 16, or see, I just screwed that up. Negative 4.9 T squared plus VT plus S. All right, so let's fill in what we know. H is going to be zero. Negative 4.9 T squared plus 13 T plus S, which is zero. And again, as we've discussed many times in the slides before, the plus zero on the end, I don't really need, so I'm just going to get rid of it. Now, start to solve this. So start by factoring. Can I, is one side zero? Yes. So let's start. Now again, I didn't want to do that. Now again, I got that ugly decimal there. Now notice this needs one space. This one doesn't need any spaces to clear decimal. But again, I want to get rid of all the decimals. So again, I'm going to times everything by tens to clear the decimals out. So 0 times 10 is 0. I'm going to get negative 49t squared plus 130t. Oops. All right. So now let's start to factor this. 0 equals. Now I got the negative here. I got to take that out. Now, between 49 and 130, they don't share anything, so I can't take out any regular numbers. And then between t squared and t, I can take out a t, leaving me 49t minus 130. All right, so now let's pull these things apart. Negative t. 49t minus 130. Okay, let's set the pieces to zero. And now we're going to solve this. So again, there's a one here, so divide by negative one. So t equaling zero. That's the start. Now here's where we're going to be a little more fun with this part right here. So we're going to add the 130. So 49t equals 130. Hey Gwen, divide by 49. So t is equal to, all right, so let's think about this. How many times can 49 go into 130? Okay, so one is 49, two is 98, three is gonna be 100, that's it. Drawing a blank here. 49, that's going to be a 7. Carry the 1. That's going to be a 30. It'll be 147. I should have known that. So we obviously can't exceed that. So it's going to be 2. And we're going to have 49 in the bottom. 
So 98 goes into 130, uh, 32 times. Okay. Now, again, this is a great example of, because if I say, yeah, I'll be there in 2 and 32 49ths, no one's going to know what you're talking about. This is where they're going to want your decimal. So this will be 2 point, and that's going to be working out to be 0 0.6530612. So let's run that to two places. So 6.653, we'll say it's approximately 0.65 seconds. Okay? Let's move on. All right, so that's the end of this video. Hopefully you learned a lot. And then I will see you next time.